today we are celebrating, as we know, maybe not, maybe not all of you know, we're celebrating All Saints today. We have a couple of visiting seminarians here who, uh, who for them today will be Trinity Sunday. But today, um, well, I'll explain, at least, at least for their benefit, that the Feast of Pentecost in the Byzantine tradition is really essentially the Feast of the Holy Trinity. That, that's the way it liturgically is, is uh, arranged and understood with the with emphasis on the person and the work of the Holy Spirit as the way that the Holy Trinity is uh, communicated and works in the world uh, for our salvation. So we need to have a Sunday for the Holy Trinity. But today, celebrating all saints, uh, right after Pentecost, uh, tells us that sanctity is the uh, expected fruit of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit has been sent into the world to make saints, to, to sanctify us, and to prepare us to enter the kingdom of heaven. So that's what we're celebrating, what we need to uh, attend to in our, our lives. But before I go on, I should, I should take a little, a little head count here. How many of you want to be saints? Well, most of you, that's pretty good. Um, uh, that's, that's where you start, anyway, uh, is, is with, with the desire to be saints. And so, so now that you want to be saints, um, here's, here's what you have to do, according to the readings. <clears throat> you have to walk around in skins, you have to live in dens and holes and caves of the earth, and you have to expect to be stoned and flogged and sawn in half. Now how many more <laughs> Not so many. Well, um, you, you may or may not have to endure all of those things. Uh, Jesus uh, puts it a little bit uh, differently in, in the Gospel, but still it's, it's very uh, uh, demanding. It's kind of ironic, I suppose, today on Father's Day that Jesus says, if you love your father more than me, you're out of luck. You're not worthy of me. So, uh, a little nod to the fathers here, but uh, Jesus is more important, I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, um, what he's saying, though, is that um, we have to have our priorities uh, set. That God always has to be first in our lives, even above uh, family time. And certainly then, if it's above family time, then it's above any other uh, attachment that we might have to, to anything in this world. So we have to uh, uh, listen to what the Lord has to say, because he says even in the beginning of the Gospel that he's going to come back, and he's going to, to see who are his followers, and who, who are those who, are, who uh, professed his name, and stood up for him in this life, and who were ashamed of his name, and who, who cowered in, in fear, or, or, or gave in to the, the, the pressure of the, this degenerate culture around us. He's, gonna, he's going to ask us uh, whether we were faithful to him. And again, that's going to prove whether what side we're on, whether we're with the saints or not. Um, the epistle says that we're, we're surrounded by this cloud of witnesses. And that means there are millions of them who, are, who have gone this route before us and who have suffered probably much more than we ever will uh, for the sake of, of our Lord. And you know, there are, there are several uh, today that, that we know about that the news that we have read about. There's a, there's a, a Christian pastor in a, in a prison in Iran who's, been, who's an American citizen who's been, who's been beaten and tortured for months now. He probably is not going to live in that. And there's another woman who's, who's awaiting, sent two women who are awaiting the, the sentence of death uh, because they happen to be Christians. And one, uh, one of them, and also before she gets killed, she has to be flogged a hundred times because she dared have uh, marital relations with her husband. But since they're Christians, their marriage is not recognized by Islam, and so that she has to be tortured and then killed. So these, uh, but, they're, but they're not, they're not recanting their faith in the midst of all of this. They're not, they're not being uh, afraid to suffer and to die. And Jesus will welcome that when, when he comes for them. And he will say, you were not 
ashamed to stand up for me. You are not ashamed even to suffer and to take your life for me. That's why, if you look in the uh, in the offices for this feast, it's almost all about martyrs. I mean, there's 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 dozens of different classes of saints that we can celebrate, and they're all at least given an honorable mention. But probably 90% of the texts are about martyrs, because that's the ultimate witness. That that's the that's the way that you prove uh, that you belong to Christ. But to witness, we can we can witness in, in many other ways, and then it's it's demanding anyway, even without having to be flogged or or, or killed for our faith. Uh, it still is demanding to be able to stand up for what we believe in, in, in our workplaces, in society in general, and maybe even in our, in our homes, because Jesus said, you, look what's going to happen in your own house. Mother is going to be against daughter, and daughter against mother, etc. So that means he knows that even families may be split because of him, because of faith in him, because somebody believes and somebody doesn't. But he says, believe anyway. It's more important to believe anyway. So we have to uh, strive to keep that sort of uh, uh, ideal uh, in our in our minds of, of what it is uh, to be a saint. And and as one uh, uh, spiritual writer from the last century said, the only uh, real tragedy in life, human life, is not to become a saint. It's like the ultimate failure is not to make the way, not to become a saint. So we have to really uh, make that uh, uh, determined uh, effort in our life to to uh, strive for sanctity. And there are there are basically two ways that we, at least we see in the, in the readings here today of what, what sanctity is aside from all of the suffering and all that. Um, and the kind of negative one is to uh, avoid sin. What what the uh, what the author to the Hebrews says there is. Um, well, as soon as he encourages us to, to persevere in the midst of this great cloud of witnesses, he says, lay aside every weight, every encumbrance of sin that clings to us. It's just like trying to, to run a race when you have weights on your, on your wrists and ankles and knees and, and, and a little stone around your neck or whatever. Um, so we have to, in order to become saints, to, to become sanctified, to become purified, to see God, see the truths of the, of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, we have to lay aside the weight of sin. You know, Jesus says in another place, uh, to, get to, to my, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, so take my yoke upon you. And we, we might think, well, that sounds that sounds pretty heavy, you know. He says, put a yoke on you, and which is often identified with the, with the cross. Um, so he says, put my yoke upon you. But the reason he says that is because the yoke of sin is much heavier. It's a much heavier weight to carry around. And he wants to relieve us of that. It's easier to bear the cross and to live a life of faith and love in our Lord than it is to indulge yourself with the evils of the world and haul that ball and chain around with you, both in this life and in then in the life to come. So we lay aside the weight, the encumbrance of sin. See it that way. See it as something not, both people see what, what things are simple. They, they think it's something good for them. They think it's something pleasurable and fulfilling or something. But we can't see it that way. We have to see with the eyes of faith the eyes of the gospel. We see it to see those things as encumbrances, as weights. We have to cut away from ourselves so we can walk free and light in the Holy Spirit and run toward our, our Heavenly Father and all, our whole family in heaven. Every part of witnesses, they're not just, they're not just uh, you know, saints that are painted on, on icons that are, that are, that, that are, you know, not flesh and blood. There are, there are family, there are uh, our uh, brothers and sisters living in, in heaven. The, the icons connect us with them. The icons are, are ways that we enter into their presence. But we have to really uh, see them as, as, as brothers and sisters who love us. We're, we're going back to our families. We cut off all the ways that can keep us from going there. 
And the, the, the positive thing is simply to follow Jesus, to do the will of God. You, know, if, if you can reduce sanctity just to that. Avoid sin and do the will of God. You do that, you're a saint. Do the will of God in the, in the uh, situation, the, the state of life that, that He has placed you in, called you to, and then, then you're in. I mean, it's, it's costly because He says, He does not pick up His cross and follow me, does not work in me. But, but everybody uh, has, to, has to carry some sort of load in this life. Everybody has to suffer something. You know, so it's not just like, oh, we've become a Christian and now we have to suffer and all the rest of the time. Well, that's not true at all because um, everybody has to suffer. But uh, Christians know how to derive the meaning from suffering, how to bear fruit from suffering, how to turn it into something that becomes a communion with Him who suffered for us, who bore our sins in His own flesh out of love for us and nailed them to the cross and said, come, follow me, because this is the only way to your eternal happiness. And we have to hear that and, and embrace it and, and love it because it's a gift from him to us to open this way to us that many people have not seen and many will not see. And then finally, um, you know, usually we think that it's, uh, it's kind of a um, not good form at least to, to ask what's in it for me. You know, when, uh, when anything comes up and something comes up, we say, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do that, but what's in it for me? Well, well where's that? We're not supposed to do that, because that's kind of a selfish answer, it seems. But St. Peter said that. As soon as, as, soon as uh, um, Jesus talked about giving up all these things, St. Peter said, well, look, we give up everything for you. What's in it for us? And the Lord did not uh, reprove him for that. He didn't say, shame on you for asking such a question. He just, he just answered it. He just told him what's in it for him. And, it's, and it's what's in it for him is, and for us, if we, if we follow Jesus, is, is a, a multiplication of, of graces. The things that we give up for him are, are given back to us in, in some form or another, or a hundred form in this life, and then in the next life, we inherit everlasting happiness. So that's what's in it for us, and it's okay for us to ask that. Because the Lord knows that, that what, what He uh, calls us to is demanding, that the, that the road to sanctity is demanding. But He wants to tell us that there is something in it for us, something great, something beautiful, something eternal, that He will lovingly and generously grant to us as long as we follow them, as long as you do those three basic things, cut off the encumbrances, the weight of sin, and then jump up and rise to follow them and to, and to his kingdom. So let us uh, pray uh, constantly for the, the intercession of, of the Queen of Saints, Our Lady, and the, all of the, uh, our brothers and sisters who have, who have run the race who have fought the good fight, who are now rejoicing. They, nobody in heaven regrets one minute of anything that they suffered on this earth for Christ's sake. They probably wish they could have suffered more. But in any case, no one has any regrets in heaven for serving Christ even under suffering and death. So let us bear whatever cross He sends or permits to us and embrace it and run to Him with love and with faith and with joy, knowing that He has prepared for us eternal happiness beyond anything that we can imagine. And then we too, we may never get our faces on, on the walls of churches like this, but all we need to do is to find our place at the, at the banquet hall in the kingdom of heaven, and we will be praising and thanking Him with all whole heavenly family unto ages of ages.